You know, I always tell people we're like the Forrest Gump of motorcycles because, yeah, we were there when Kennedy was assassinated. Yeah, we were there when they walked across the bridge in Selma, Alabama. You know, we were leading that. We were the first vehicle in President Obama's inauguration parade. So, you know, it doesn't matter World War II, World right. War I. If it happened, somehow, somewhere, Harley there Davidson was a Harley-Davidson there, yeah. That's powerful. It is, it is. What's up, y'all? I'm Jake from Prism Supply. Today, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Harley-Davidson Museum. We just filmed with Bill uh, from my garage, his home garage, as well as the museum garage here. And uh, we had some leftover time, so we asked Bill if he could give us a little uh, private tour of the museum. You bet, my pleasure. It's something I love doing. When we were building the museum, this was called The Road. And this is really where you get to see stock motorcycles. If we made it, they'll be along this. That's commercial, racing, you name it, they'll be here. And you get to really watch them progress, not only in styling, but you know, in technology and engineering as well. This is the world's only twin cylinder 1909 in the world. And you know, this is probably you know, the rarest Harley Davidson in the world. 26 of these were made, 25 of them were recalled to the factory and destroyed because it had an atmospheric valve and just didn't perform like it was supposed to. So, you know, we were talking earlier about some of my favorites and you know, this 1915 right here is definitely pretty high on the list. This is the nicest 1915 11J in the world. Uh, which which is, is the same bike that you rode cross country? Essentially, this is the civilian version. So in 1915, our first three-speed transmission, uh, our first full electrics on the bike. So you got headlamp, taillight, horn, uh, really a kind of a super pivotal point in Harley Davidson's uh, history where a lot of the features on this are things that we're used to today. A lot of these bikes have never been ran, correct? Because they were pulled directly off the line. Exactly. Put into storage. Yep. And what we're seeing now is just a fraction of the museum. Obviously, yep. there's so many things here, and I'm asking you to cover a few of your favorites, but like, yep. there's rooms scattered throughout. Absolutely. That we can't even dive into. Absolutely. That, you know, and that's why you gotta come. You gotta come right. and see, see here, you know, it's just literally, we're just scratching the surface of what's here. And you were telling me something earlier that about the humidity yep. uh, is all controlled. The lights are specific lights so that yep. they don't fade the Everything's LED, so we've got no uh, ultraviolet. Uh, we maintain all our temperatures and we actually have a person, we have trackers throughout the museum inside of cases, outside, uh, where we measure temperature and humidity over the course of every 30 days. And then we download those and take a look and see if there were any spikes or anything interesting that you know we, maybe we should uh, make tweaks in our HVAC system. So that's all part of the whole conservation process. I love that. Yeah, you know, here's a 1938 WLD, high compression, small twin, second year W series. Brand new bike that they saved in 1938. And if you look, on the speedometer there, four miles. And those four miles aren't going down the road. That's pushing it. People pushing that bike oh, since 1938. The 36 knucklehead is, is Beautiful. You know, the definition of Harley timelessness. Yeah. And if you look, you know, shapes and proportions, the teardrop tank, you know, that profile, we still see that. The dash incorporated onto the tanks, that triangular line. Yep. You know, even in our soft tail, they replicated that same shape line. and proportion because that line is, is right. And that's really, you know, quintessential Harley Davidson. Look good in 1936. I mean, this bike looks good today. Probably our most desirable, you know, Harley Davidson uh, in 120 years. I was telling you earlier that one of my favorite rooms here is the clubs and competition room. Yep, by and far. My, my, my favorite gallery in the entire museum. And I just, you know, What's so great about it is that there's so many different topics are covered. You know, not only do we talk about, you know, early board track racing, we talk about, you know, dirt track, cinder track, we talk about jack pine off-road racing, we talk about hill climbing in here, we talk about club activity, you know, hill climbs and races. That was just a place for uh, motorcyclists to gather. Like that was the event that they could ride to, that they could hang out together and watch these people compete and uh, socialize. This is one thing that we couldn't really save as a company, because you know, a lot like the actual shirts we would make, and we would embroider them for you, and all those sorts of things. But you know, every club kind of had their own unique, unique style, and so we were always on the lookout for 
you know, these kind of personal items. I love them. Vivian Bales, who's the enthusiast girl. Harley Davidson actually sponsored her. In 1929, a young girl, 18 years old, she rode from Georgia up to Milwaukee on her 1929 DL and stopped in towns along the way. Well, you know, you think about that, that's, boy, would that be safe? So they Harley actually wrote police departments down like, hey, we got this young girl, make sure that no one messes with her and she's coming through. And How'd she get the nickname Enthusiast Girl? Because she was on the cover of the Enthusiast and they actually- In 1929. 1929, wow. yeah. Got, you know, this is why there's no good knucklehead parts left. These yeah. guys are sitting there hammering them through the wood. That's why they're so expensive. <laughs> exactly. This is all Bob Stooth footage that we have, you know, 1939. It's all just beautiful color footage. It's just like so great. I know, I could just watch it for hours. Yeah, I have. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is small artifact storage, so this is what I always tell people, essentially anything that's not a motorcycle. So that can be anything from owner's manuals to marketing literature to clothing, pins, watches, fobs. You know, one binder here, pop it open, and you know. Crazy. There's original factory photographs. And these are the raw shots, because you can see they're in the photo studio and the bike's kind of propped up. Mm -hmm. And outdoor shots, you know, this is kind of a, a vertical format, so this might have been used for like an enthusiast cover. You know, and this is just kind of like, you know, one year, one model. You, know, you can grab a binder back here and pop it open and at random, and here we are in 1912, same Whew. thing. Pretty amazing. And all original. These are all prints off the original negative. We still have the negatives. Most of the negatives, silver nitrate ones, are stored in a large commercial walk-in freezer. So we store them at zero degrees to prolong their life as long as we can. The tank wall is pretty cool. This was kind of a blank space that we didn't have anything in the museum. And so, you know, when you explain to people, how do you take that same shape and then make that same shape different, literally, for 70 years? So you'll see a little bit of everything here, but really, like, 1933 is the first year where they consciously say, we're tired of green motorcycles. You know, the dealers are saying this, that customers are saying, I don't want to buy another Harley because it looked just like the last two I had. So each year, unique look and graphics and paint and colors. And, and so that's where this, what this really speaks to. Isn't it true that all this was hand pinstriped? Absolutely, absolutely. Every fender, every line. tank, it was, you know, they'd sit there with racks of tanks and literally uh, in a brush and do that eight hours a day. Which I know you have some of the brushes yep. over there. Yep, absolutely. So this is another bike that we were kind of, you know, I mentioned is one of my favorites and, and this is our 1958 Dual Glide. But what's really unique about this is Hi-Fi Green was not a color that was available. And this bike, we actually found out through a dealer, this was a special order for Shriner. So they ordered it on a special color. So they did the Hi-Fi Green. If you look, there's a few things that make this kind of unique. How we know it was one of those orders is that there's no safety guard on the front and there's a couple of spacers in there to take place where the safety guard would have mounted. So it had the safety guard delete. And we were always like, boy, this is kind of an oddball. And then we actually had a dealer that says, oh, I know those, I set up uh, X amount of those. And he said, that, believe it or not, he said the factory made um, a few extras, too many. And so this is one that they would have saved. And it's just a great looking bike. Experts out there like, well, that wouldn't be because it doesn't have all these things. And it doesn't have those because you know, the company was willing to like, we'll do anything you want. We'll paint it pink if you want. You know, you, you give us an extra $10, we'll make it happen. You take a look at like 71 Super Glide. If you look at the order blank for that bike in 1971, you could order that bike in prime coat and they would give you a $6 credit. So you could order it primer and paint it yourself. I think it's cool just you can see a little bit of everything. You can yeah. see like this wild custom double knucklehead bike. You can see a race bike, a hill climb bike. You can see Evil Knievel's bike. Yeah. There's just so much you can see. Right, Elvis Presley's bike, the bike from Terminator. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's just wherever you look, there's something. And you really realize how many touchstones points there were. You know, I always tell people we're like the Forrest Gump of motorcycles because yeah, we were there when Kennedy was assassinated. Yeah, we were there when they walked across the bridge in Selma, Alabama. You know, we were leading that. We were the first vehicle in President Obama's inauguration parade. So, you know, it doesn't matter World War II, World right. War I. If it happened, somehow, somewhere, Harley there was Davidson a Harley-Davidson there, yeah. That's powerful. It is, it is. Oh, it was a great moment here. You know, of course, Elvis Presley's bike. Elvis was on the cover of The Enthusiast, but this is the paperwork for that bike. And what's really great is, people don't realize is Elvis had a mortgage. You know, he made payments on this bike. It wasn't like he walked in and paid cash. And so on the mortgage document, it says, uh, you know, what was your occupation? And he was a 
a self-employed vocalist. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. But the American dream. What was the first thing he did? He signs with RCA, records Heartbreak Hotel, buys a Harley Davidson. A brand new Harley Davidson. That's the other thing. Like every time I come here, I see something that's totally new, totally unique. Yeah. One of the fun things is, you know, wherever you go, there's always kind of like crazy, you know, Easter eggs. We have these little explorer drawers around here. If you look at here, there's what we call a bar spinner. And not only did it have like a bottle opener built in, but there's a divot in the center and that was made to put on a bar and spin and everybody would sit in a circle and whoever it landed on, they had to buy the round of drinks. <laughs> so, and we sold that in the accessories catalog. So it's in the 1930s. So, Crazy. you know, it's another one of those kind of like unique little things a lot of people haven't seen ever before, but yet, um, you know, it speaks to that whole socialization and camaraderie and, you know, riding as a group and, um, you know, a neat little, little tchotchke that they made available. Bill, it was truly an honor to be able to do this. Seriously, it feels like a, a once in a lifetime experience. Nobody gets to do this with you personally. Thank you so much. Um, where can we find more out about you or the museum? So museum, uh, hdmuseum.com, of course, or Facebook, uh, Instagram, you can follow those. If you want to find out more about me, you can follow me on Fat Dog Racing 67 on Instagram. It was my pleasure. My Appreciate pleasure. you, Bill. You Thank bet. you so much. Thanks.